the knock gun, sometimes called the volley gun because it fired a volley of seven rounds per discharge from seven separate barrels, each holding a 52 caliber ball. On film, it shows up in a handful of places, mostly as a replica, as these are expensive and heavy guns. A knock gun today can go for upwards to $40,000, as they were only manufactured briefly in the late 18th century, with a total production run of 655 guns. Good, good. And what do you have there? Seven barrels. Fires pistol balls. Mr. Knock of London. Knock guns only had a limited use with the Royal Navy during the early Napoleonic Wars and declared obsolete by 1805. The gun was rejected by the army. Ironically, in the movies, they show up predominantly on land. The gun virtually is a co-star in the Sharp series. This your sergeant? No, sir. Not me, sir. Him, sir. Private Arpel, sir. The gun also shows up in some very entertaining but unlikely places in Hollywood, like at the Alamo in the hands of Jim Bowie, or in numbers in the pilot episode of the Young Riders TV series, though it can be noted a handful of these guns were sold privately. Seven barrels in one, each 50 caliber, and they all fire at once. Good grief. The knock gun looks impressive and intimidating, and it can be as effective as it looks, but only in a specialty role. It's a smoothbore firearm with a short barrel at 20 inches or 510 millimeters. A handful were made shorter, and some were rifled, but this was not a long-range weapon, though it did have more range than a shotgun of the time. The knock gun is muzzle-loaded. You'll never see it being reloaded on film, though you might catch it in a video game being inaccurately breech-loaded. This was a firearm that might only be used once in an engagement. Loading was a very tricky task due to the weight and length of the gun. It was also not guaranteed that all barrels fired in their intended volley, meaning when you went to reload, you had to be careful not to double load some barrels. You're a dead man, Obadiah. Bang! All seven of the knock gun's barrels are welded together, with vents drilled through from the central barrel to the other six barrels clustered around it. It fired using a standard flintlock mechanism, when the priming gunpowder ignited the central barrel's charge, it vented to all other six barrels at once. It was an all-or-nothing weapon. This meant the recoil was incredible, no doubt why you see a big bastard like Patrick Harper carrying one. If you didn't know how to brace the gun, or were a smaller man, the gun could be quite difficult to manage. Luckily, the recoil pad was made of a nice soft brass. Might want to brace that gun, Jimmy. The knock gun at short or even medium range could definitely be devastating and potentially make an excellent club of iron after being used. It was something that had potential to clear a section of deck away for a naval boarding party. However, they were never popular with crew, being just too cumbersome to use. This was primarily because it was to be fired from rigging down onto an enemy deck. So you have to manage the recoil and climb rigging with this 12.5 pound or 5.6 kilogram weight without falling to your death or burning your sails from the blast that shot from all seven barrels. It'd be further difficult to use a knock gun on horseback as sometimes shown in movies. This would require significant skill, strength, a very broke horse, and a specialty scabbard. Though the knock gun is certainly very cool, rifles or muskets are cheaper, easier to load, have a better range, and are combined together for their own volley fire. Furthermore, they easily mount bayonets, an essential period weapon for infantry defense against charging cavalry or Irishmen. Good soldier always looks after his weapon, boy. Yeah! All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching all the way through to the end. Now that's soldiering.